catch his granddaughter here. So keep that in mind. Thank you, Brother Rich, for all those kind words. <laughs> and uh, to the whole group here, this is um, certainly, I feel honored, and I'm sure Kamitha and her mom, they feel honored too, that you you guys would all decide to come together with us and, and celebrate. So uh, hats off to everybody that's here. Um, interesting. Um, I'm 67. Uh, I guess if I look back, I can think of all the hardships and ups and downs and ins and outs. And I can think of all those problems that I had coming up. And here I am, 67 years old. I've made it through all of them. You know, you look back and you say all those issues and problems that I had. Uh, and I'm healthy now, and I'm back. So uh, I just thank I thank the Lord for that. Uh, I guess the, the I could tell you guys a whole lot of things, that, but you probably already know them. But I'm gonna just kind of give you an idea about a little story about how I've grown uh, in the past 20 or 30 years. I think everybody can probably relate to this, but. Oh, way back when, you know, the, the homeless men and the, the beggars on the street. Uh, way back when I was a young adult, I used to kind of run from these guys. You know, you go on the streets and you know they come in to ask you for money. And I used to run from them, you know. Uh, as time went on, uh, I didn't run from them. When they would come to me, I'd kind of size them up. You know how some people look like, well, they can work, but you know, why not? They're not working. So I used to try to kind of look at people and decide, you know, maybe should I give my money to them? They look like they can already have a job. And so I used to go through that. And so if they look like they could work or able-bodied person, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't give them anything. And then as time has passed on, uh, some of these homeless people, they'll come up to you, especially when you come to the filling stations or when you're getting gas. And um, they come up to you, and I would like, well, you know, maybe give them a dollar, maybe give them two dollars, and just do something like that. Uh, and then as time went on, I got to thinking, you know, I shouldn't be trying to judge this person. I have no idea what this person's life has been like. Uh, and you know, obviously, if this person had a choice, they wouldn't choose to be homeless. They wouldn't choose and to be out there begging, begging. Uh huh. They wouldn't be choose to be out there beg begging. I mean, they, cause they had money. Well, yeah. So uh, I got to the point where, you know, when they would come up to me, I would give them money, maybe five, maybe ten dollars, whatever. And so this uh, this one homeless guy, probably the last year. Uh, he seems to know when I come to the <laughs> filling station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he seems to know when I come to the filling I station. All the time. <laughs> so I would try to kind of pick a different time, you know, because <laughs> uh, he rides the bike to, he rides, I get up 5.30. I'm at the filling station at 6. He's there waiting. <laughs> and so. He lives there. <laughs> Get a paycheck. <laughs> so I'll go in the I'll go in the store. I'll buy my paper. Uh, I can see him looking through the window there. See? <laughs> so and, and then I so I'll come out and I'll go to my car and he'll come up behind me, you know, sir. And so then I you know I'll kind of begrudgingly go go into my pocket and give him something. So that's that's probably go has gone on for maybe three or four months. And then it got to a point where I was saying, you know what, I, I, I got to be better than this. I, I, I you know, I, I just got to be better than this. So um, I would get to the point where I would, before I would leave the house, I would set aside maybe five or ten dollars plus my gas money. So when this guy comes, I would have money for him. <laughs> so I'd go into the gas station. I see him looking at me. He followed me out. I had money for him, so I, I, you know, I would give it to him. So that must have gone on for a few weeks. And then finally I said, you know what? 
I still gotta be better than that. So, this past week, I go into the filling station. He's looking at me in there. I set aside $20. I come out, I don't wait for him to come to me. I went over to him, said, here, have a great day. I go over to pump my gas, and I hear this guy said, hey, mister. He's never spoken to me. He said, mister, he said, you're a great guy. Mm. And that just, you know, wow. I'm telling you, wow. that took my heart. Mm. For, you know, I, I'd never even heard the guy speak, but uh, he said, man, you're a great guy. And uh, I think for the rest of the day, I was just up high. I think mm. that done more for me than I think my $20 did for him. Mm. So I say all that to say, you know, I don't know what the moral of that story is. Maybe uh, you should give more. Uh, maybe you shouldn't judge people. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, what little you have, maybe you should share to give it. Um, I don't know, you take from that what you want, but uh, I know in my heart, I'm always gonna set aside some money. So when I go to the filling station or whatever, uh, and I see somebody, I'm going to go approach them. I'm not going to wait for them to come over and ask me. So uh, just a little illustration there. Just, uh, uh, you know, I'm just thankful to be here. And, uh, you know, God put me in a great position. Uh, I have wonderful friends, have wonderful relatives. Uh, uh, I am so honored to have my grandbaby here with me. I couldn't have had a better escort. So... Uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much.